What's up, guys? I'm Alexia. I'm Quentin. Uh, we just want to give you a quick few announcements. Um, CIY, we're planning on that. We still want you guys to sign up. It's going to be awesome, fun. Check that out. Keep up to date with that. Yeah, and also, uh, if you guys aren't already, follow us on Instagram and check out uh, our YouTube channel, uh, Whitewater Youth. Uh, it's Y-T-H. I can't spell it. I almost said W. Um, anyways, yeah, check us out. We have a, a series on there, a talk show, Reed and I do, called uh, Snapback Boys. And uh, we're going to be putting um, other videos on there, uh, like worship uh, events and uh, stuff like that, and even uh, this video that you see now. So, uh, yeah, make sure to check that out. And uh, so here in a minute, you're going to be hearing from uh, Reed and Caitlin, uh, and they're going to be taking you through uh, today's service. So uh, stay tuned and check it out. Hey guys, uh, welcome to uh, kind of the way that we're doing church for now, um, which we're so sorry, we're so sad that we don't get to see you. Um, but for now, we still get to spend time together. It just might look a little bit different, which is okay. And today we're going to talk a little bit about fear. And the first time that I ever met my wife, uh, I had the honor uh, to scare the mess out of her, uh, just using a mask, a friend and her greatest fear, which you may not know my wife, but if you do, her greatest fear is the fact that someone would leave their pants on the floor, uh, which it is true. But at the same time, uh, for me, this is just not a fear. So we, uh, devised this plan. We hit her pants. Snuck into her apartment, of course, on open apartment nights, because that is what Christian school kids do. Uh, and we got to hide those pants right on the floor. I hid behind this door, waiting. I knew there's no possible way you could put pants on the floor without her being super, super worried about picking up those pants. So uh, I hid behind a door, put a mask on of this crazy looking Appalachian person, uh, turned the lights off knowing full well that she'd walk in the door, she'd pick up the pants, uh, and then that was my moment to strike. So she walks in, of course, sees the pants on the floor, literally says the exact same thing that I would have guessed, which is, uh, why are these here? Uh, bends down, picks them up, and I time it perfectly, where she flips on the light, and as soon as she flips on the light, my face is right by her face as she bends down, picks up the pants, and she literally does the, the, the crazy, scared uh, girl thing where she screams and falls at the same time, right? Uh, made made my life. Oh, it's so good. I absolutely loved it. Uh, and I have a video of that, which if you want to see it sometime, just come ask. I'll show you. It's on my phone. Uh, I get it right from the moment that she screams and it's like full face shot. Uh, it is perfect uh, the way that I got it. It just happened to work out that way. Uh, but here's the thing. Fear is a huge motivator for almost all of us in our life. Uh, fear sells, right? Your family is in terrible danger, but if you buy our product, you'll be safe, right? Or like our security system, you should buy it or else you'll die horribly. Like fear sells something to us every single day. Fear gets votes, right? My opponent will take all your money, land, freedom, right? Vote for me. Or fear, fear boosts local TV news. Like can you believe that there's a meteor that's about to hit Cincinnati and then like you actually look it up and like the meteor is like 80 million miles away and it's never going to hit earth. But like you totally click on that thing because you're like, what if it hits? What should I do? Like this is going to be nuts. Um, but hear this. Most of our fears I've talked about so far are kind of ridiculous or funny, but many aren't, right? Many of these are, are great actual fears for people. Uh, there are some things that we face that are just genuine and legitimately terrifying, right? Uh, you may have fears, whatever your fear is, right? Like spiders, snakes, uh, other insects, heights. I don't like heights. I freak out about heights. It freaks me out. I don't even know what to do. Um, but we all have these legitimate fears. And so right now we're actually living in a time where this is, this, this is a fearful time. It's a terrifying time for a ton of people, right? Uh, and a little, and some of it is like, okay, I'm okay, like uh, as long as it doesn't affect my life, but it, it's affecting all of our lives now, however it looks. Uh, we have to stay at home, we, you, grocery shopping looks different. Uh, all of these things, right? Like you, you name how your life has changed, no school. Uh, there's all kinds of things that are kind of throwing us off pace right now. Uh, and so we're gonna dive in a little bit and I hope that what God has to tell you uh, through this message is, is, a, is a sign of hope uh, and, a, and a sign that um, you can be at home and that's an okay place to be. 
So uh, there's a difference when the Bible tells us not to be afraid. The Bible is never calling you uh, like irrational or ignorant or you don't know anything, right? Uh, the Bible gives situations where your fears are well-founded and then it says, don't be afraid. So Psalm 27, it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, though a, a, uh, though a, all, a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength in ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Uh, and then right before he went to the cross, Jesus said this to his disciples, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give, I, not, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. He literally says, do not be afraid. And he's not saying that you can't be, there, there, there's things in the unknown that he understands. He knows that there's things in our world, in our life, that are just unpredictable. They're weird. They're unknown to us. We don't know much about them, right? Uh, I didn't know much about a pandemic before this situation. Like, I'll be honest. Like, I'm sitting here trying to study, trying to learn, trying to figure out what's happening. Uh, and I think most of my fear is coming from the fact that I just don't know. I don't know what it, this means. I don't know what that means. I don't... I don't know what, what is next. Like, what's the next step out of this? What if I get it? What if my family gets it? I'm just concerned. I'm worried. And God says literally, hey, don't fear. He gives you that don't fear. And my question is how? How do we not just not fear? How do we obey when Jesus is calling us not to be afraid? I can tell you, I, I can tell you something that I hear people say a lot. God won't give you anything that you can't handle, right? Which is totally not true. But the truth is, God won't give you anything that he can't handle. He won't give you more than he can handle. If we are going to defeat our fear in our lives, we know, we have to know who Jesus is. If we know him more, our fear becomes weaker and weaker because we know that he's given us something in our lives that he can handle. And so here, here's, uh, here's your courageous first step. First, know that God is in control. God has given something to us that maybe we can use, but he is totally in control of the outcome. It, it, this, this opens the door to knowing Jesus a little bit more. If you surrender your life to him, you have the Holy Spirit available in your heart to help you see Jesus and know him. And he's given you a tool. If your Bible has been sitting on the shelf, you're not using your greatest weapon against fear. Get to know Jesus. Get to know what he says. Get to know what he says against fear. Your courage is found in knowing Jesus. We quiet our spirits, read his word and obey. You have to start following and keep following, right? That's deep, right? Then keep following someone. You've got to keep following them, more deep stuff. But if you take the first step, you've got a journey going. Step two, and you've got a direction, right? So if you, if you just follow Jesus, if you follow his word, if you follow what he's saying to you, and then after that, you keep following him, you have a direction in which you're going. You won't stop being fearful just because you open your Bible. But it'll help, and it'll point you in the right direction of hope. Now, here's your second step. We talk about this all the time in our ministry. One life is so incredibly important to us. The person in your life that you are supposed to give hope and a home to this, this, this doesn't change anything. Maybe God in our ministry has given us a pause, a moment uh, to take a breath, to really evaluate who the people are in our life that we want to love and surround ourselves with. There are so many people in this world, not only you, but the people around you who need hope and they need a home. Right now is a scary time, right? You may feel the fear, but here's what we're challenging to do. Our team, we believe full heartedly that God is in control of this. If you believe that too, we want you to reach out and provide hope to the people that you know around you. This is scary. Do you know where people turn to in their scariest, like most terrifying times? They need to turn to something that they understand or that they can learn to understand or something that can give them hope. So look to your one life, say, hey, listen, maybe this isn't for you yet, but I have hope in this time. God's got this in control. I don't know what I don't know what holds. I don't know who's going to get sick or who's not going to get sick or whatever. All those terrifying questions that you've been asking yourself for the last week. Uh, but you can help provide hope because you can say, "Hey, listen, I know that there's a God who's got this in control, and I believe that wholeheartedly." 
Uh, and if he's going to use my story, please, God, use my story to help someone else. Uh, so look around you. Look for someone. Uh, look, for your, look to your one life. Hey, listen, I want to just make sure that you're okay. Are you fine? What's your fears? Ask him questions about that. Uh, ask him questions about this thing. What is the, what is the biggest thing that you're afraid of? Um, make sure that they know that they're loved and they have someone else that's in their corner um, that's looking out for them. So uh, this is all I got. We're going to be back on Wednesday at noon. Check in with us. We're going to hang out for an hour. We're probably going to play some games, talk about some other stuff as well. Um, but uh, we'd love to hang out with you. If we can't hang out with you in person, might as well be on Instagram or YouTube. Uh, come check us out. So we'll see you guys later. Uh, let us know if you have any prayer requests. Peace. Hey guys, this is going to be our small group session for the next few weeks. You can either gather with your friends or if you're by yourself or family or with, if you're with your small group. Um, we're just going to be going through some questions and talking about what Reed talked about. And this week he talked a little bit about fear. Um, and we all have those small fears or we have like bigger phobias that we have. Some people are afraid of spiders or heights or there's just weird fears like uh, peanut butter being stuck to the roof of your mouth. I discovered that that's a fear uh, this week. So we're going to um, talk a little bit about fears and Reed also mentioned a quote uh, about the in the Bible, um, how it's okay to have fears. We're not making them uh, seem illogical or like you shouldn't have them, uh, but God says to not be afraid. So in this first uh, small group breakout session, we're going to talk a little bit about the fears that we have, uh, why we have them, childhood fears, fears that we have now, and a little bit about uh, if it's illogical to have fears. So go ahead, take a few minutes to answer these questions with your family or your friends or whoever you're with, and then we'll be back for another session. All right, guys, welcome back. I hope you guys had a good conversation about all of that and you figured out uh, what childhood fears you had and your irrational things that you thought were weird. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the book of John. Uh, when Jesus was at the Last Supper with the disciples in John 14, 27, he said, Peace I leave with you. May peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Um, Jesus is saying this to his disciples when he, right before he was about to get arrested and tried uh, and crucified. And so we have a few questions uh, talking about and describing uh, the fear that Jesus had and uh, what it means to put your trust in Jesus and how the disciples had trust in Jesus in this time. Uh, because we are in trying times right now. Uh, things can be fearful and we can be scared and it's not irrational to feel that way. Uh, but it's good to depend on Jesus and know and trust in him uh, that he is in control with all of this. So go ahead and discuss these questions with your group. All right, welcome back, guys. I uh, hope you had a good discussion with that. Uh, our last two sets of scripture are both going to be from Psalm. Uh, the first one is Psalm 46. Uh, it says, God is our refuge and strength and ever present in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Through the earth, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, through the waters and the roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging waters. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that one and what it means and how God is the one. Uh, if anyone, that we should put our trust in situations like those. And the next one is uh, Psalm 56, 3. It says, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. Uh, and so we have a few questions just to figure out what it means uh, to put your trust in God and that just memorizing that one verse uh, can mean so much and that you have that trust in God and it's constantly in your brain uh, to trust in him and that it's always there for you. So go ahead uh, with your group and discuss these last few questions. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, that'll be your small group session for this week. Um, it's short, and it's just to get you talking about fear in this time and that uh, we really should be putting our trust in God and that he has, uh, we genuinely believe with our team and this church that he is in control in this situation. Um, throughout the week, we'll be doing Instagram Lives and going on YouTube, so just keep up with that. And if you guys have any prayer requests and anything that you're fearful of that you want us to know of, just uh, DM us on Instagram, and we'll be going through that, and we'll respond to you. And, uh, we'll be praying for you guys in any way that we can. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring.
praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever bring We live for you Like you, there is none beside.